Hello, America. Hello, students at Western Kentucky University in Accounting 110. What are we learn? What are we going to learn about today? Today, I look at the syllabus, and I don't know why it's got the name it's got. What's the syllabus say to, we're going to learn about today? I mean, check it out. What's the syllabus say we're going to learn about today? I mean, that could be a rap song. What's the syllabus say we're going to learn about today? Although I can't rap. Like, that actually came out a lot better than I thought it could. What's the syllabus say we're going to talk about today? Accounting. But specifically, what's the syllabus say we're going to talk about today? Y'all don't care? What's the syllabus say? We're going to, nobody knows. Nobody has a syllabus. Wow. The syllabus says we're going to learn about cost of goods manufactured. Right? That's the wrong month. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. There we are. Cost of goods manufactured is what it says. The syllabus says we're going to learn about cost of goods manufactured, but I'm not even going to use that word today. And so, I guess I'm, you know, so I'm going to teach you about cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. Not cost of goods manufactured. And that's what this name of the video will be on uh, YouTube as well. So, for those of you who are missing, for the, who, who have missed class, so far we're running 100% right that we have videos for every class period. We have videos for every class period. And it is very funny that this video... Uh, or YouTube is smart enough to know when there's a person in the video, uh, you know, because if you know, most of, like, every video I upload, YouTube will pick three slides, from, three images for me to choose from. And almost invariably, I am in those choices. Whereas, actually, I think more often than not, I'm not on screen. But nonetheless, it's picking all the choices stereotypically from those that I am in. So, do we have, let me, let me see your notes. What do we got for notes? What did we do last time? What did we talk about last time? What did we talk about last time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody go to page 101, please. Turn to page 101 in the handy handbook. 101. Page 101. And, Joseph, what's a direct material, man? Oh, who wandered in? There's some, who was the last person to wander in? You. A name, please. Last name? Let me mark you here. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do keep track of tardies, FYI. And, they, and if your uh, class participation slash professionalism grade is a little lower than you expect, it's invariably because of... I, I subtract tardies from that point total, okay? Um, so, what is direct materials, Joseph? But what is it? Definition. It is a variable cost, isn't it? All the stuff in the product. Right? And so, we can, here, I'll move it up here. And let's focus the camera on the chair for a moment. Camera, chair, camera, meet, chair, and door. Camera can, in the bottom right hand corner there of the video, you can see the chair. Tell me a direct material that you see in that chair, Joseph. There's no cloth in that chair. <laughs> plastic, very good, plastic. Can you name another one, Brandon? Landon, excuse me, Landon's not here. Ryan, some more direct materials? Um, I, I mean, is it not all made of plastic? Uh, I don't know. This might be real metal. Yeah, like metal, I guess. Metal, you guess. Yeah, metal. Metal, metal. okay, metal. Okay. Then what is direct labor? Blaine. Pardon? All the workers who worked on the product. Those are the direct laborers. What is manufacturing overhead? Caden is not here. Ian, what is manufacturing overhead? 
all other product costs. Can you give me an example? Peyton. The machines used to make the products. They're not the office machines. It's not the office photocopier or the office computers, but it's the machines very specifically used to make the product. So they're in the factory, okay? And then, thank you, uh, Joseph, for prompting this question. Sarai, are direct materials variable or fixed? They're variable. Direct labor, is it variable or fixed? Grace. Am I not talking loud enough? <laughs> I'm not talking loud enough. Direct labor, are they variable or fixed? Uh, variable. variable. Nate, you got this? What do you think is coming at you? What question? I bet you could almost guess the question. Precisely correct. Awesome. Connor, what's the answer? And or. And or. I mean, I mean think the better answer is yes. yes. Right? Is it variable or fixed? Yes. yes. Which means depends can be either one. Depends on the specific cost, right? So let's name a variable manufacturing overhead. Ellen? Did we talk, did you, oh, were you here? You were here, you weren't here last class period, but you were here the one before, so that means you should know. It's from those notes. Yeah, isn't this awesome? What about the machines though? Something kind of specific. Not the rent of the machine. No, 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 no. You would know, I do believe, because I think you gave it to us last class period. Electricity for the machines would be variable. Yes, very good. The electricity for the machines is variable because you can turn that machine on and off, can't you? And so we're only using the electricity if we're using the machine. If we're not using the machine, we're using no electricity. That is very, that varies. Blake, give me an example of a fixed manufacturing overhead cost. Say again? Well, g please give me an example of a fixed manufacturing overhead cost. Um, like the cost of a sewing machine? Such as, give cost, describe that cost a little more, in a little more detail. It's always going to remain the same. Yeah, so thinking about the rent on that sewing machine, right? So the rent on that sewing machine would be a fixed cost, fixed cost, because it remains the same regardless of the number of units produced. You, you can put it down for a while, it'll still be there. It'll still be there. So, uh, how about that? That's a nice little review, right? Nice little review, some good notes for you, but you can watch the v videos and see them. What is a prime cost, Skyla? Were you not here two periods ago? You were not, and you haven't watched the video? Not yet. Don't you wanna? I mean, I mean, has anybody watched a video? So some people have watched videos. They're not, are they horrible? They're not horrible. They could be, they'd be more exciting if there's a video person in the back, right? Zooming in on me, following me around the room. That'd be more exciting than just having it see the chair and stuff. But uh, yeah, Gatlin, what do you got for me? I forget. What was the question? What is the prime cost? Thank you. You're not sure? Were you here two class periods ago? Well, then look in your notes. Page 102. You do know. If it's written down there, then you do know. And? Yes. That's how we calculate it. Direct materials plus direct labor. So you did know. Quit fibbing to me like that. Why are you doing that to me? Jackson, what are conversion costs? Uh, they're direct labor plus manufacturing. Direct labor plus manufacturing overhead. Kenzie, I'm going to ask you a yes or no question. 
Is direct labor a prime cost? Yes or no? Yes. It is. Yes, it is. So if you're asked to calculate, do math, the math for prime cost is direct materials plus direct labor. But is direct labor a prime cost? Yes. Okay? Danny, is direct labor a conversion cost? Yes. And then, Corey, one last question before we move on to new material. Um, what is the def what's kind of the word definition of conversion cost? The cost, to convert direct into the cost to convert direct materials into a finished product. Okay? Cost to convert direct materials into a finished product. Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts? Piece of cake, walk in the park, easiest falling off a log. So does it feel like, you, hopefully it feels like you've learned a little bit this semester, right? We're learning some stuff, you're, you're kind of scrunching up your face like, nah, not really. Not really. Hit me with something real. Hit me with something real, Dr. Fessler. Hit me with something real. Blaine's not here. Hermes, what is the format of the income statement? Most simple calculation of profit. So now we are looking at 103, I think. Yeah, Ch checking out page 103. Yes. No, you were giving me the math. You were giving me, I want to know the math. Revenues minus expenses equals profit. Revenue minus expenses. Let's see if I got that on the board. Oh, I did. That was perfect. Camera, almost perfect angle. Revenue minus expenses equals profit. That is the most simple calculation of income. And uh, look at that quote down there. Youth is the best time to be rich and the best time to be poor. Written by a playwright uh, more than 2,000 years ago. There were plays more than 2,000 years ago. How cool is that? You learn something, huh? The Greeks. the Greeks have been doing it for a while. Romans, well they probably stole it from the Greeks. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts. So let's look at the next page. Absorption costing income statement. Okay? Absorption costing income statement. So this is the most simple calculation, but there are actually a couple of different ways that this can be formatted. Okay? So absorption. Absorption costing income statement format is... Revenue minus cost of goods sold equals gross margin minus selling and administrative expenses equals operating income. And then variable costing. <laughs> Income statement is revenue minus variable cost equals contribution margin minus fixed cost equals operating income. Cam is not here. I'll let everybody write this down first. And I suspect there are some questions. Yeah? Why are, do I suspect there are some questions? Because I think I used a lot of abbreviations people don't know the meaning of. Yes, sir? Yeah, there are, we are go, we'll go through it. We'll, we'll go through it. Because there are a lot of abbreviations up here I think that people don't know. Did you catch this one say? What does COGS stand for? Say, did you hear him or me? What did he say? Cost of goods sold. COGS stands for cost of goods sold. 
And so you ought to make sure you do put this in your notes so you can uh, kind of sleep tonight, wake up tomorrow, and still, knows what, still know what the heck we talked about. C-O-G-S stands for cost of goods sold. Hayden, did you catch GM? Where's Hayden? Did you catch GM by, by chance? No? GM stands for gross margin. Gross margin. So it is actually, so it's. And gross is actually a really old English word that, that talks about a measure. Gross margin is what GM stands for. Gross margin. And what is gross margin, Dr. Fessler? What does that mean? All that is is a description of that math. Gross margin is revenue minus cost of goods sold. Okay, revenue minus cost of goods sold. S and A. Olivia, did you catch what S and A stood for? Pardon? No. no. S and A stands for uh, selling and administrative. Selling and administrative expenses. Selling and administrative expenses. And then OI, Sailor, what do you think OI stands for? It is operating income. OI stands for operating income. In, in a very technical sense, operating income minus taxes equals net income. Okay, operating income minus taxes equals net income. And again, the those words, operating income, is just a description of the math. What is revenue minus cost of goods sold minus selling and administrative expenses? It is operating income. And then operating income is actually distinct technically from net income because net income would be an after-tax number. So taxes have been paid. Operating income is before taxes. Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts? That's a lot of words, isn't it? Something that's really important to recognize, though, is that cost of goods sold is a fancy name for product cost. Selling and administrative expenses is a fancy name for period cost. Stella, what is a product cost? On, it's all costs associated with making a product. Exactly. So product costs are all costs associated with making a product. Car, uh, Carson, what are period costs? All other costs. All other costs. So it's a not product cost. So product costs, how many categories of product costs are there? Emma. Hmm? Yeah, because you remember this, right? You remember this? How many categories of product cost are there? Three. What are they? Um, direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing. Precisely correct. Direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing, overhead. So cost of goods sold is that. It's all those costs. It's product costs. Selling and administrative expenses are period costs. And it's also really useful for you all to know that this one 
is GAP. What does G-A-A-P stand for? Veronica. Generally accepted accounting principles. You were ready for that one? Sailor? You thought it was what? Generally accepted accounting principles. So, <laughs> so this is the one when you look at the published financial statements of your favorite company, we've talked about Apple and Tesla and um, others, maybe Coca-Cola in here this semester. This is what it's going to look like roughly, okay? Variable costing income statement format is not GAAP, but it is something that's, that companies might use internally. And it is actually something we're going to use later this semester because we, as we start to get into some math, one of the things we're going to do is uh, kind of relevant costs and break even. And we're going to use data from here. What is a variable cost? Uh, Jaron. Jaron here. Jaron might not be here. Jaron is not here. <sighs> Maxton, what's a variable cost? Cost that varies with the number of units produced. What's the fixed cost? Joseph, back at you. We've talked to everybody this, the, today already. The fixed cost remains the same regardless of the number of units produced, so it doesn't change. Okay? And look at that. Did I or did I not, on the first day of class, promise that I was going to try to talk to all of you every class period? And I just did it. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Hopefully makes class a little more interesting for you. At least you're a little scared, so you stay awake. So now what? Oh, let's finish taking notes here. Because if you look at page, uh, where are we taking notes here? Yeah, yeah. There's a blank, there are some blank spots. Like if you look at absorption costing income statement format, it says if an, an appropriately labeled income statement would have at the top the name of your com the company, then it would have the name of the statement, absorption cost of income statement format, and then there's a blank there. We need to put something in that blank. Okay? And so it's very important to understand that an income statement summarizes information for a period of time. Okay, it summarizes information for a period of time. And so th in that blank, you would identify the period of time. And that would stereotypically be for the year ended. So that phrase would be for the year ended. And you would write that in that, where are you at? There. You would write that in that phrase. You would write that for the year ended. You got your notes on the wrong page. No, 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 back, 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 back. But that's where you could write the, do you see the two variable formats? They belong just right there. They could, they could. Very good, so for the year ended, perfect, perfect, okay, on that line, for the year ended. And that same phrase, like you could write it right here, for the year ended, for the year ended, okay? And that same phrase also describes the variable costing income statement format, because they're both income statements. Uh, where are your notes? Yeah, so you'd write for the year ended here and for the year ended here. Okay. So what I've got on the board, the absorption and variable costing income statement formats, that should be on page 104 in your notes, page 104. Okay. Yes? Oh, maybe not, what the CM is. Maybe not, OK? Uh, does anybody, do you remember? Anybody remember? Uh, Ryan, do you know what the CM stands for? Uh, I guess it's like cost margin. Close, contribution margin. Thank you for asking that. I don't think I had to find it. It's actually spelled.
Contribution margin. What do you think that stands for? We've seen that one already this semester. Variable cost. What do you think FC stands for? Hermes? Fixed cost. Variable cost, fixed cost. Yes, sir. And so contribution margin is how much contributes to fixed costs. Contributes. That contribute is that word here in contribution, right? So how much this contributes to covering fixed costs? So CM stands for contribution margin. Ryan, what's OI stand for? Operating income. Operating income. Blaine, what's the difference between operating income and net income? It's a little simpler than that. It is simply operating income is before tax and net income is after they've paid their taxes. So the one word tongue in cheek answer is actually, what's the difference between operating in income and net income? It is taxes, you know, it is taxes, okay? And then finally, what do we need to do down there? Huh? We need one more definition, don't we? Caden, I do not believe, is here. Caden, not here. Ian is here, though. Ian, what's the format of the balance sheet? Yes. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. That is the format of the balance sheet. And then the phrase at the top of the balance sheet, though, is different. So notice there's a phrase down there, that blank line. The phrase is different. And the phrase is as of a date, as of the date. Normally, I would kind of take my camera out now and pretend to take a picture, because that's what a balance sheet is. It's a picture of the assets, liabilities, and equity of an organization at a moment in time, like as of midnight, December 31st, 2023, this was the assets, liabilities, and equity of our company. Okay? So that is a balance sheet. So we got income statement, balance sheet, and we've got two versions of the income statement. We've got the absorption income statement format, and we've got the variable costing income statement format. And Peyton, which one's gap, absorption or variable costing? Absorption. absorption is gap, okay? And gap, once again, stands for what, Sarai? Gap stands for? Gap, G-A-A-P. Don't have it in your notes? Let's get it in your notes. Grace, what does GAP stand for? Um, generally accepted accounting principles. Generally accepted accounting principles. Generally accepted accounting principles. Connor, you need that in here. Yes. Generally accepted accounting principles. Okay. Let us, we're going to do now, we're going to start getting into some math here. So much stereos. So problem to complete in class, if you turn the page, it, it doesn't even say anything. So notes, the pro, if you look down at the bottom, we're going to do so much stereos. And I don't know what page that's on. What page is it on? Uh, 110. There we go. Oh, actually, let's do, oh, I lied. Let's do Mango Motors instead. That'll be easier. Let's do Mango Motors instead. And let me change my notes.
Okay. Mango Motors. I don't know how trustworthy that sounds, huh? Would you want a Mango Motor in your car? Maybe not. Maybe not. So Mango Motors. Let's do it, shall we? And so what do you think we got to do? You know, what, you know what I would do if I was you? That means you as well. I'd write these two formulas down, right? And I'd write it down like I have it on the board so you can write numbers beside it because that is what we're going to be doing. We're going to take these numbers and putting them into these formats. Okay, Mango Motors. We're going to take a swig. Am I kind of in the way? I'm a big door, or a big, I'm a big not door, right? Not see through. I'm not see through. Let us see. Cards, cards. Nate. Pick a number. Let's do, I guess let's start over here on the absorption cost in income statement format. Pick a number, any number. Tell me where you think it goes. We got Mango Motors there. We got some numbers there. You see those? Let's calculate. Income, we're going to be calculating operating income, not net income, using both the absorption costs. And, so let's do absorption costs and give me a number. Talk at me. Say what? Just one number, man. You're confusing me. How much? $810,000? That one? It goes in revenue. Eight hundred and so that's eight hundred and ten thousand dollars. Let's hear you say it. Beautiful. Eight hundred and ten thousand dollars. Connor, give me another number. Just one. Sixty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. And where does that go? In the absorption costing income statement format. Is it a product cost or a period cost? You think that, and this is the question you want to ask yourself. This is the hard part about this for you, right? Are selling and administrative costs product costs or period costs? They are period costs because they are not a cost of making the product, okay? So we've got variable. Selling and administrative costs of how much? $60,000. And dollars. Thank you. $67,500. And we're going to put it in brackets to denote that, that we're going to be doing some subtra subtracting to make that happen. Ellen, another number. Oh, you don't have, do you have a friend? You don't, you don't know the problem. You could, you could come over here and look. She, she, she's very friendly. She's very friendly. So this way you can kind of, you know, know what's going on. And you're, you said you're going to go get the book right after this, right? That's what you told me. <laughs> it's, it's okay if she looks yeah, and shares. Yeah, yeah. So that way she's very friendly. And she's very brightly dressed. Which is very important. <laughs> and so, so, Blake, help me. Help! 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 Are you thinking about it? G give me a number, man. Help me. I need some help here. I'm standing up here all alone. 
No net. Um. Ow. You're a little loud in my ear. This? Yeah, for you. Yeah. I mean, people say I'm a little too quiet. I mean, that's what she told me earlier. <laughs> but it keeps your it keeps your attention more if it varies, right? It does. Uh, Fifty thousand dollars, Blake. I heard you. What do you want to do with that? That's a cool. It's a cool number. I like it. Where's it go? What is it? That fifty thousand dollars. If we look at it, what is it? Fixed selling and administrative costs. So where does that go? Again, the question you want to ask yourself when we're doing the absorption cost in the income statement format is that a product cost? Or is that a period cost? What do you think, Blake? What is selling administrative costs? Maybe you ought to make sure you all know what that is. What is the selling cost? Cost of selling the product. What would that be like? Paying somebody to go sell it. Paying somebody to go sell it. Advertising. Shipping. And then administrative costs. That's like your accountant. And that kind of stuff. <laughs> Do the, is all that stuff involved with making the product, Blake? No. So would you like to revise your answer about what kind of cost this is? It's a period cost. Okay, so, sir? <laughs> On the board is a period cost. And how much is it again, Blake? 50,000 what? Pesos? Okay. Okay. So now, Ellen, now you've gotten comfortable in your new surroundings, can you give us a new, another number? Um, $60,000. $60,000. What is that? Uh, fixed manufacturing costs. Fixed manufacturing costs. So is that a product or a period cost? Um, and what would be your question about that? Why are you unsure? Yes, it is. And so the actual putting out of the product, we would call a, we would describe that as a product cost, almost def by definition. And, so, and that's a great way, I mean, it's a great way to think about it. You just need to now connect to those two and that the, the act of manufacturing a product is product cost, cost of making the product, okay? Fixed, and how much was it again, Ellen? 60,000 60, pesos? Dollars. And again, that's a negative number. We're just missing one number now, aren't we? Skyla, we're just missing one number. What number are we missing here? What? Five hundred and forty thousand dollars? What is that five hundred and forty thousand dollars? By words, huh? Variable manufacturing cost. And so are those a product or a period cost? So it's a cost to manufacture the chair. Is that a product cost? Is that a cost of making the product? Or not a cost of making the product? A co it's a cost of making the product. Okay, so when we're manufacturing that product, it's a cost of making the product. Okay? So that is $540,000. Is that right, Skyla? Did I write it down correctly? Yes. Beautiful. Gatlin, now what? Um. No, we don't. At least not in this problem. Is there anything we can calculate? Yeah, 
Yeah, or I, we can just subtract it like this. Yeah, that too. But that's exactly right. Back at you, Gatlin. What are we going to do now? Looks pretty easy. You got yourself a calculator? Works. Can't use it on a test, but you can use it right now. Are you do? Are, have you done the work already? No, I'm not supposed to. No, you are. That way you can check it. Did I do it wrong? I don't know. He's going to tell me. <laughs> what do you got for me, Gallon? Uh, nothing, nothing yet. Is it louder when I'm just right here? <laughs> That's what Connor was complaining about. I have 92,500. 92,500. What do you think of that? Oh, you're calculating the grand total bottom number. Let's uh, calculate gross margin first. Okay? Thank you for that. Let's calculate, because there's an in-between step. Have you calculated it? 210. And we'd say 210,000. So the gross margin is $210,000, and operating income, which you kind of went ahead and did anyway, $92,500. Jackson, what do you think of those numbers? You got the same numbers, so you're in complete agreement. Crazy support, as it were, as it were, crazy support. Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts? Piece of cake, walk in the park, easy as falling off a log. How's this feel? Getting real? I mean, some numbers now, getting real. Not just definitions. Kenzie, let's do the variable cost of the income statement format now. What, you got a question for me or you got an answer? I, I was going to say something, but never mind. Please, please, give me a number, any number. Tell me where it goes. Um, $810,000. Which is what? Revenue, where does that go? At the, top. At the top. Very good. There we are. Danny, talk to me, man. Help me. $60,000. What is that? What kind of manufacturing costs? Because when we're doing the absorption income statement format, we are concerned about whether this is a product cost or a period cost. For the variable cost of income statement format, we are concerned about whether it is a variable cost or a fixed cost. And which is it, Danny? Fixed, so where's it go? It's a fixed cost. So these I'm going to divide. So over here, notice I, I have cost of goods sold, variable, and fixed. Over here, we're going to have variable costs that are both product and period. Product, period. OK? So what number am I writing down, uh, Danny? And it's fixed product cost, right? And that would be 60,000 pesos? Dollars. Have I asked that question today? Corey, another number, please. $540,000, which is what? Variable manufacturing cost. Where's that going to go? Variable cost. Is it product or period? Yes. Five hundred and forty thousand dollars. Okay. So far, so good. Hermes, another number, please. Sorry, 
is what? Okay. Okay. Variable cost, period, for how much? How much? Sixty-seven thousand five hundred. Okay. Sailor, question. Okay. Did I do that right, Hermes? That's what you were thinking. I did what you were thinking. Yes. Okay. Say another number. And there's a pun there. Please say another number. 50,000, that's actually the only number left, isn't it? Where's it go? Fixed cost. Period or product? Period. $50,000. So let me be more clear this time, right? First things first, what do we want to calculate? Hayden. Well, there's actually a number we can calculate before we get there, right? Correct. Can you do that for us? Beautiful. And Olivia, can you calculate operating income, please? Hayden? Two hundred and two thousand five hundred pesos. American dollars. American dollars. Even because there are actually different types of dollars in the world. Singaporean, lots of them. Olivia, what do you got for us? Huh? That shouldn't be right. Well, oh, I don't want these two added. I want two oh two thousand minus one hundred and ten. Well, operating income. <laughs> How much? $92,500. So a useful way to think about it is these are two different ways to cut up the pie. You know, sometimes you cut the pie into two pieces because you're each going to eat half but if there's three people there that's not a good way to cut up a pie is there if there's three people you can cut it into thirds you can cut it into quarters maybe eight or ten pieces these are a couple of different ways to cut up the pie different shapes to calculate operating income yes sir as far as you are concerned right now yes in real life no but i'm not sure i'm going to get you that close okay but for now this is just two different ways to cut up the pot but how, what i can be sneaky about right is instead of asking you for the bottom number i can ask you for those middle numbers on a test or a quiz or a test right what's the gross margin what's the contribution margin those numbers are the ones that are going to be different otherwise you just subtract them all and then you're like ah this is easy we well, kind of got to know the in-between spots. Um, trying to decide what the quiz might be. The quiz might be these two income statement formats because those were kind of that was kind of the big news today, right? What are the two income statement formats? The absorption revenue minus cost of goods sold equals gross margin minus selling and administrative expenses equals operating income, and the variable cost of income statement format revenue minus variable cost equals contribution margin minus fixed cost equals operating income. I mean, I've got to memorize. You got to memorize yet? Would it be the formulas or just the two types? Oh, the formulas. The formulas, that sounds more exciting. Don't you think so? I mean, <laughs> Blake's not that excited about this. Well, Blake, help me, man. What is the, what is the absorption cost and income statement format? Just read it for me. Beautiful. Now that you've just read that to me, can you look at me and say it without looking? No. You cannot? No. Okay. But, but, but by Tuesday you can. That's not that hard. That's not that hard. I mean, i got to memorize. It can't be too hard. You know what I mean? 
And what is the variable cost in income statement format, Sailor? Well, you need to sort that out. It's uh, red, so down. The very yes, the variable cost in income statement format. Uh, revenue minus variable cost um, contribution margin equals contribution margin. Yes. Also known as, oi, 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 like operating income. You never heard of that before? Well, actually, you will never hear that ever again in your life outside of this classroom. So, so please don't kind of walk into your place of work and say, hey, how's oi this month? You know, because they're going to think you're a bit crazy. I'm just trying to help you remember stuff. You know what I mean? Hear what I'm saying? So. Stella. What's the absorption cost in income statement format? <laughs> absorption cost in income statement format. Oh, um, Selling and administrative expenses. So say it all again now that you know what those those letters mean. Revenue minus cost of goods sold equals gross margin minus uh, uh, <laughs> selling and administrative expenses equals operating. Beautiful. Carson, what's the variable cost in income statement format? Revenue minus variable cost equals What's CM stand for? Beautiful. Absorption cost in income statement format. Emma. Um, Beautiful. Now, are you thinking about this every time I'm asking somebody? Are you reading through this list and trying to memorize it? But that would be a great use of your time right now, because I'm trying to help you. You're were, you were like, man, I can't, I can't do this. But, you, but I'm trying to help you. So what's the variable cost in income statement format? Revenue minus variable cost equals contribution margin minus fixed cost equals operating income. Revenue minus variable cost equals contribution margin minus fixed cost equals operating income. Uh, I think Jaron is not here. But you should be thinking, like, this is your, I'm trying to help you all learn this, right? That's what I'm trying to do. Veronica, what's the absorption cost in income statement format? Revenue minus cost of goods sold equals gross margin minus selling and administrative equals operating income. Yes, and, that's, and, and please do recognize selling and administrative is a selling and administrative expenses. Selling and administrative expenses. So revenue minus cost of goods sold equals gross margin minus selling and administrative expenses equals operating income. Max, and what's the variable cost of income statement format? Uh, revenue, revenue minus variable cost equals contribution margin minus fixed cost equals operating income. Revenue minus variable cost equals contribution margin minus fixed cost equals operating income. Mr. Baker, what's the op absorption cost of income statement format? Ooh, not cost of goods served. Cost of goods sold. Margin. Minus selling and administrative cost equals operating. Yeah, so make sure you have in your notes what all these initials mean. Okay, make sure you have in your notes what all these initials mean. Um, Ryan, what's the variable cost in income statement format? So revenue minus variable cost equals contribution margin minus fixed cost equals operating income. Blake, what's the absorption cost in income statement format? Revenue minus cost of goods sold equals gross margin minus um, really close. Selling Good. administrative. Selling administrative equals oi. Operating income. Very good start though. So you does not yeah. feel good. Should feel good. Should feel good. Made some progress, good progress, okay? So that'll be the quiz. Since you're working so hard at studying for it, make sure I give you the right quiz on Thursday, right? 
And we will see you then, everybody. Thank you. Don't forget everything between now and then.